நமஸ்தே வணக்கம் ஸ்வாகதம் நமஸ்காரம் திஸ் மார்னிங் வி வில் பி டூயிங் அவர் சிங்கர்னைஸ்ட் குளோபல் பிளேயர் அண்ட் பிஃபோர் தேட் ஐ தாட் ஐ வில் ஷேர் சம்திங் ரிகார்டிங் எ கொஸ்டன் தட் கேம் அப் இன் மை செஷன் எஸ்டர்டே டியூரிங் அவர் செஷன் எஸ்டர்டே one of the questions was about what type of pranayamas can be done by those having acid reflux and who are having issues with the digestive system especially of a pitta nature now traditionally the concept of digestive disorders especially of the regurgitative type where you have a hard burn or the water brash or you know pain in the you know uh upper part of the abdomen and lower part of the chest sometimes mimicking the pain of even a heart attack at times it can be so bad it can really be tight here sometimes you know in the mouth you feel the acidity and even the undigested food particles coming up this is all an aggravation of the pitta dosha and pitta is understood as the fire as the bile as that which burns that which metabolizes i like to understand the pitta energy as the energy of metabolism rather than just digestion that we think of about it as metabolism because metabolism happens in every cell and the moment you say digestion people only think of the stomach and nothing else so when we want to work on cooling down the pitta and balancing it it is very imperative we use practices that are of a cooling nature and we have a whole series of practices in yoga which are the cooling pranayamas and these cooling pranayamas the shita pranayamas you have the shitali the sitkari and another pranayama which is called sadanta danta is the teeth sadanta is through the teeth this uh, sadanta in uh, the gita and the tradition is also called kavi pranayama kavi means a poet so someone who has a very sweet voice and uh, this pranayama is said to enable one to have a sweet voice like a poet so this pranayama is one of the simpler ones because when we talk about shitali and sitkari curling the tongue becomes a bit tough for many people who have a thicker tongue there's a whole genetic variation of the, the thick short tongue the long slim tongue you know so many so that creates a little bit of issues for people the second one is where you fold your tongue back against the teeth which is a bit easier but then what i find is for most people irrespective of the tongue and other things the sadanta is a practice that actually virtually everybody can do where what we have to do is we are going to be breathing in through the teeth so you clench your teeth and and then you breathe out through the nose now normally when we talk about breathing in yoga we always say breathe through the nose the nose is for breathing the mouth is for eating and talking and more or less this is quite true because the protective mechanisms of the nose are definitely much better than those of in the mouth so if you are breathing through the nose you go to filter out much more uh, unnecessary particles than if you are breathing through the mouth so that is absolutely true but in these pranayamas very specifically for the purpose of cooling the system down for the purpose of attenuating an aggravated vata sorry pitta dosha that is why it is being done so there is a specific reason why we are doing it and here the air that is passing in you know as you breathe in through the clenched teeth 
you then just swallow a bit and then breathing out through the nose so at the end of the inhalation you swallow the Apvakasha Mudra you can hold for a short duration depending on your capacity and then you breathe out through the nose so here in through the mouth actually the clenched teeth the gas between the teeth is where you are going to be breathing and then you are breathing out through the nose when the air passes over the tongue there is a principle of evaporation happening here and this is the latent heat of evaporation so what happens is when the air moves over the tongue the tongue is very moist and that is why the tongue is related to the water element okay and that is why the taste is related to water element so there's quite a bit of water on the tongue so as the air pa passes over the tongue what is happening is that the water is evaporating and that induces a beautiful sense of cooling with it it is also possible that this is working on the hypothalamus the hypothalamus which is the center that regulates the temperature balance in our body but that is more conceptual here what we are trying to work on is attenuating an overactive pitta dosha so this type of practice is very simple you can do it from any of the seated postures you could do it even from a chair you could do it lying, lying down if you are not able to sit up so even people who are convalescenting in hospitals uh, recuperating recovering in hospitals even such people can benefit a lot by doing it even in the bed so it is it is one of those practices that can be done by everyone which means it is accessible and nowadays the word accessible yoga has become very popular well yoga is always accessible it is just that we need to find ways to adapt it as the great Sri TKV Deshikachar used to say uh, it is the Bini Yoga of Yoga where you have to adapt the practices to the individual that is where the therapeutic aspect comes in the traditional teachings are you have to adapt to yoga which means you have to become fit for yoga that is in a bigger picture of yoga as a life science and yoga as you know something you grow into but at the therapeutic level especially in modern times where people have so many issues uh, we often have to adapt the yoga it is called laukika yoga the applied aspects of yoga have to be brought in so let's do maybe a few rounds uh, maybe six rounds today we'll do of the sadanta pranayama also called kavi pranayama a request from one of my friends on facebook yesterday that i should talk about some pranayama related to acidity and uh, the digestive system so join me as we do this <clears throat> breathing out breathing in through the clenched teeth breathing out through the nose in through the clenched teeth out through the nose in
enjoy the sense of cooling down. A technique that pacifies the nervous system, cools us down literally and metaphorically, enabling us to attenuate and overactive pitta dosha. Health can be understood as a state where all the doshas are in equilibrium. Samadosha, as is taught in our traditions, both in Yoga and Ayurveda. It is not about being dominant in any one of the doshas, but being balanced. The Bhagavad Gita says Yoga is Samatvam, balance, harmony, equanimity, equilibrium, homeostasis. Samatvam Yoga Uchchate, as Lord Krishna tells us in the Bhagavad Gita. The whole verse is a very beautiful verse in the Bhagavad Gita. It says, Yogastha Kurkarmani Sangam Tyaktva Dananjaya Siddhya Siddhayo Samabhutva Samatvam Yoga Uchchate. That equanimity, that inner equilibrium, that balance, that is what we want to attain through yoga. Yoga is not found in the extremes, it's found in the central mean, the balanced center point, that point of Sukhasthana. Rub your palms together, generating some heat around the eyes, the forehead and the head. And we will now be going into the uh, someone just commented on my t-shirt. This is a t-shirt from the World Yoga Festival. You will see it in reverse mirror image. Uh, when I download my video and put it on YouTube, I will change it. The uh, World Yoga Festival, which is organized so beautifully by Ram and Sonali Banaji near London. And uh, last year I was there and had planned to be there this year. I uh, will be there if the festival is there. And a uh, wonderful place where so many came together in the true spirit of yoga. So that's the beautiful t-shirt and I was just noticing a nice sun ray behind me. Huh? Nature supporting this work. We will go into the um, synchronized global prayer and if you have questions, if you have any suggestions, please send them in because that enables me to connect with you more and uh, looking at connecting as much as possible during these difficult times. Let's now go into the synchronized global prayer and 27 rounds of the primary pranayama. Breathing out.
Sit quietly for a few more moments, letting the resonance of the Brahmari seep into yourself, letting each and every one of your trillions of cells vibrate in harmony. And let this vibration of the individual 
extend out to vibrate with the whole universe. When the drop becomes the ocean, there is a sense of oneness, a sense of harmony. When we connect to the universe in which we live, when we experience that sense of oneness, there is a beautiful state of health, well-being, wellness, and joy. The great Siddhas of South India have made beautiful statements about this concept of the interrelation between the individual, the Pinda, and the cosmos, the Anda. Satamuni Siddha says, Andatil ullade pindam, pindatil ullade andam, Andamum pindamum mundve avindatan parkampu. When we truly realize it, we realize that the individual and the cosmos are one of us. Rub your palms together, generating some nice heat, placing over the eyes, the forehead, and the head, coming out of that contemplative practice of the Brahmari. A very beautiful sense of collective oneness. I see that two of my very favorite people, Balaji and Meena, are online practicing with me. I think one of the greatest spin offs of the COVID pandemic has been the ability of so many of us to come together and practice together. People who are divided by space and even time time zones at least, we are able to come together and practice. And so many of my family down under, so many of my family even in India and here, Balaji and Meena who are in Pondicherry but in different parts of Pondicherry, well, we can all practice together. That is what yoga is, coming together. Let's all come together and let us express the Sankalpa, the aspirational statement with all our collective power of peace, we win over COVID-19. With all our collective power of peace, we win over COVID-19. With all our collective power of peace, we win over COVID-19. With all our collective power of peace, we win over COVID-19. With all our collective power of peace, we win over COVID-19. With all our collective power of peace, we win over COVID-19. With all our collective power of peace, we win over COVID-19. With all our collective power of peace, we win over COVID-19. With all our collective power of peace, we win over COVID-19. Let us express our admiration, the mudita, towards those punyavans, those wonderful people who are fulfilling dharma in such a beautiful way world over, who are in the forefront of fighting this battle. Let's express our appreciation for them with a gentle clap from the heart and expressing our admiration, our heartfelt support for them and maybe pray for them to be safe, their families to be safe and for them and their families to be taken care of physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and also, very important, financially. May the governments of the world realize that these are the people who in a time of crisis are the foot soldiers who keep everything going. May we realize that they need to be valued and the value must be expressed quantitatively and qualitatively. We conclude with the Shanti Mantra three times and let us join together as we chant. Om Shanti 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 Om Thank you for being with me this morning. I have shifted my 
Facebook Live to the ICYL page and we'll also be doing many such uh, live sessions on the CITA page soon, wanting to reach out as many as possible. And last night I got an email from the Ministry of Ayush where the uh, work that we are doing and all the wonderful yoga organizations are doing is being supported and the Ministry of Ayush will also be sharing the message through their Facebook page. So keep watching out. Uh, we will be appearing from different nooks and corners on the internet and join me, join us wherever you are. Remember, sharing is caring and that is the highest attribute of a noble human being, of a yogi. Be safe, be healthy, be blessed wherever you are.